Are you struggling to close deals? Cold outreach is wasting the time of both the buyer and seller at every stage, especially when sellers are using shallow and outdated data. Your organization can overcome these challenges with technology that translates comprehensive, high-quality buyer data into real-time insights. These deeper insights empower sales reps and teams to adopt the habits of top performers, which leads to better outcomes, like more pipeline, higher win rates, and larger deals. We call this Deep Sales, and we've built the first Deep Sales platform with the next generation of LinkedIn Sales Navigator. Right now, you can try LinkedIn Sales Navigator and get a 60-day free trial at linkedin.com slash trial. That's linkedin.com slash trial for a 60-day free trial. Let LinkedIn Sales Navigator help you sell like a superstar today. Just go to linkedin.com slash trial and get started. Welcome to Criminality Podcast, the podcast where we know that no matter rain nor shine, nor sleet nor snow, nor incredible, incredible heat, that loving reality isn't a crime. And I have no idea what that has to do with the weather. But Rebecca, whatever that was, how are you? (laughs) I'm good. It's a better way of talking about the weather than we have done in the past. So I'll take it. And Mm -hmm. I'm good. I'm back in the city. I'm like left the country. I'm connected. I'm miserable. It's, you know, I'm back, baby. (laughs) How are you on this uh, fine first week of school for your kids? Yeah, I am doing well. My kids are both in school full time for the first time ever. Today's the first full day with both of them. And so um, I, there's nothing I would rather do than spend time with you doing this. I really enjoy this. I mean, there's some other things I would put up there. <laughs> but like okay. this is, I mean, there are other things I'd like to do than do this with you, but they don't matter today. Today, this is what matters. I'm totally Well, kidding. I'm honored to be in this time slot with you because this is a big deal. <laughs> I don't know that, I don't know. I'd be like at Target, like getting a Diet Coke and I don't know well, what I I'd do be doing. I do have a Diet Coke with me. Don't worry. Perfect. I am worried that I'm getting like bloating and stuff and I'm afraid it's from Diet Coke. So I just had to talk with my husband about how I'm afraid I'm going to have to give it up. And I'm not there yet. I'm not oh, there yet. Melissa, I wasn't going to share this and I won't go into details. Had a little health scare, maybe sure. cancer related. And I thought, I mean, you think a lot of things when you go through that. One of, of course. them was, what if they tell me I have to stop drinking Diet Coke? <laughs> Not like, will my kids be okay? Like, are, <laughs> will my husband remarry? It's a, what if they say, stop drinking those chemicals that are like rusting out your insides? I don't think I would do it. I think I would have to just die happy. I'm totally yeah, just- healthy, by the way. <laughs> But if it is what's making me miserable, then it's like, okay, but that's like you can't see it. Exactly. It's like cheese. mm -hmm. Cheese can make me miserable, but I can push through. But sometimes I'm like, even you, Melissa, you've got to get it together. It's hard when the like repercussions happen later. Like I I, I can forget. I have a pretty convenient short term memory. It's probably from all the aspartame. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, half my brain's just melted. It's just shriveled. Mine oh my well. gosh. Yeah, well, enjoy it while you can, while I can. And um, what have you got for me today? Because I I did a very like cursory Google when you first said the clues didn't hit anything. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to live in the suspense and I'm ready to hear. Okay, this is, I don't know what you'll think about this. We are kind of in the same vein as last week, though, and you'll see that as we get started. But my three clues were T.I., Jagger, and FSU. And without further ado, let's get started. So this week, Rebecca, we're examining the age-old question, can a douchebag ever become (laughs) a reformed douchebag? You think? I, I strive and hope to say yes. Yes. Okay. 
What if you let this person in your heart, though, with arms wide open, even after they've created their own prison? Could you take them higher? Rebecca, <laughs> if you haven't figured out yet this week, we're talking about Scott Stapp, possibly reformed douchebag of the band Creed. Oh, we are? We are. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Another musical journey. Here we go. Yeah, I was excited. Rebecca, do you have any feelings on Creed or Scott Stapp before we get started? None worth sharing. Okay, but do you you remember Creed? Creed was a big deal, sure. right? Sure. Yeah. Sure, yes, yes. So when you say none worth sharing, it seems like you might be taking back what you said about Reformed. And we might just be in that sitting in I'm, the DB fair uh, era. I'm gonna I'm gonna withhold judgment and okay. listen. Mm -hmm. hmm. Let's see what happens. Okay. So Rebecca, any idea what kind of reality show Scott Stapp would have been on? Because when I found this, so here's what happened. I found a TikTok of him, somebody singing his song, and it was hilarious. And he was in on the joke, and it was I just loved it. And so then I Googled him. And reality show and found out mm -hmm. he was on a reality show. I had no idea. Mm -hmm. Any idea what it would have been? Like a making the band type vocal coach thing? Oh, okay. I was like, you think Creed was in making the band? How I, dare I, you? I don't, like, no, no. <laughs> no. Like, <laughs> um, he was on relationship therapy with Dr. Jen on VH1. So one of those huh. VH1 musicians and various sure. celebrities. Oh, um, okay. I think it was a fifth season the season's pretty good. Uh, I didn't watch the whole thing, but some of the celebrities were Janice Dickinson. So you know what oh that my. is. Yeah. It's a lot. Chaos. Agent mm -hmm. of Chaos. And uh, Big Ange from Mob Wives. Those two were also on there. Were they on Celebrity Rehab together too? <laughs> I mean, there is a very good chance for crossover on these two shows. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I know Janice Dickinson was on um, Yeah, I know Celebrity she was. Rehab. I don't know if it was Big Ange, but... Yeah, I don't know. Um, they bring a lot of energy to this show. Um, mm. It's very exciting. Um, but I, I kind of skipped around throughout it because some of those shows can just drag on forever. But anyway, sure. I got I got us there. He was on a show, and this is how we're able to talk about him today. Right. So let's get into it, Rebecca. So Anthony Scott Flippin was born in Orlando, Florida, on August 8th, 1973, making him 49 years old this week. Oh, my goodness. Happy birthday. Yeah. When Scott was five years old, his father left his mom and their two younger sisters. And he doesn't see his father again until he's 18 years old. He then goes like 30 more years without seeing him. He actually reconnects with his biological father on uh, relationship therapy. It was... Obviously planned, but it was mm – -hmm. I definitely don't think they had seen each other in the in the meantime. Wow. It was pretty interesting. So Scott's mom remarries a dentist named Stephen Stapp, who is still practicing about 15 minutes from my house. And Scott ends up taking his father's – stepfather's surname. His stepfather adopts him. So he's now okay. Scott Stapp. Got it. So his stepfather and his mom were Christian, and they raised their family in church, but they were extremely, extremely strict. Um, I've read some stuff that said his dad was a Pentecostal pastor. I'm not sure if that was actually – if he was ordained or if that's just something that was said. Um, but on relationship therapy, Scott talks a lot about his childhood, and he says there are people that came into his life after his father left – that caused trauma and abuse. And he said he would be beaten and he would be beaten in the name of religion is what he would say. Oh my gosh. He would say that somebody was beating him to get the demons out of him, oh that boy. sort of thing. So sad. Yeah. So at one point he hears his sister crying. He grabs a baseball bat, goes to confront this other person and threatens to kill this person if they touch his sister again. Wow. So on the show, he's not more specific about who in his life was abusive, so I don't mm -hmm. want to assume here. Let's get out of the doom and gloom and get into Oof. some more exciting stuff. So Scott says from the time he was really young, he had this huge love of music. When he's uh, nine years old, he attends Bear Lake Elementary School, which is near here, and he was kind of a rebellious kid. So in this attempt to redirect him, his music teacher puts him in choir. Rebecca, did you spend any time in choir? Are you? Do you have any vocal abilities? I do not. 
Um, I can carry a tune. I'm a good choir member. Like I am not a soloist, okay. but I was in the choir you had to audition for and we, we traveled internationally. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. Um, fancy. Okay. I didn't know I was school. here with Rihanna. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, I wish. <laughs> So he really did really well in this choir. He excelled. He was always given solos in it. Like it just Amazing. became his I thing. Was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. I was in chorus in the ninth grade and we had to sing this like a cappella basketball song. And me and my best friend, her mom was our teacher. We laughed the entire time and her <laughs> mom ripped into us after that. We deserved I it. I bet. You made a mockery of her. We did. But this class. song was stupid. Come on, Julie. Acapella it basketball. Was dumb. I mean, yeah, it doesn't sound like something you can stand behind. Not in the ninth grade. No. I mean, I people out here I got crushes on, lady. I don't need them <laughs> hearing me do this. So anyway, as I said, he was the kid that was getting all these solos. And the first song he actually performs in front of an audience was Yesterday by the Beatles, which I really oh, love that song. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I mean, which is like very cliche to say, but anyway, I like it. So he attends Lake Highland Preparatory School, which is like I've heard of that bougie school in the area. Yeah. Yeah. He becomes friends with Mark Tremonti. And this is somebody who he meets and he becomes bandmates with later when they both attended Florida State, Florida State, Florida State. Ooh. FSU. So there's our FSU clue. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we're getting there. So, but you still have TI and Jagger, which are complete Just mysteries. Wait. Just okay. Wait. Okay. <laughs> so Mark and Scott realize they share this huge love of music. So they hold these auditions in Tallahassee and eventually Brian Marshall and Scott Phillips round out the band. So they decide they're going to be this four-piece band. But then they were trying to decide what would they call themselves. Hmm. So there's always – I love hearing different band name, like, origin stories and stuff and how they get to get to things. Mouse Rat, you watched Parks and Rec? I didn't watch Parks and Rec. Sorry. Oh, okay. oh shoot. This oh, is, is this going to be a, the first season, a problem? Skip the first season – and go into the second. It's so okay. Good. I appreciate so the pass because I've tried, and I, you know, it's one of those things where you're like, I, I feel like I should love it, right? No, the first season is just terrible. I can fill you in in the blanks. Okay. It, it's fine. Okay. So, okay. the guys end up thinking of all these different names. One of them being Naked Toddler. But tell me how pre-internet this is. So Mark Tremonti, he is like the guitarist. He reads this article that says something like, naked toddler found running in the forest or something like that. <laughs> he clips out the article, like literally clips it out with scissors. Right, with scissors. Yeah. Puts it in his wallet to show them like, hey, look at this band name. Like this is so not the internet era, right? Like right. you just like type it out to somebody, Google it to them. But Yeah. <laughs> Holding an artifact like of a newspaper. It's just awesome. The hard copy, yes. <laughs> I wonder what else was in his wallet, though, if he's carrying around things like naked toddler. Like um, questionable I mean, headlines. Yes, not a <laughs> naked toddler or anything like that. Mark Tremonti is probably my first crush. When he puts his Aww. leg up on um, an amp and he's playing guitar, I don't know what it was doing, but it did it for me. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> so anyway... They end up playing a show as the band Naked Toddler. But the promoter of the event comes to them and it's like, hey, not sure if you thought about this, but it sounds kind of creepy to have a criminal like, even. <laughs> right. When you have your fans go say, what are you doing tonight? Going to see uh, a naked toddler isn't going to be, you know, the response that you're wanting to get. So they decided, yeah, that's a pass. And one of the guys in the band had been in another uh, band called Sinner's Creed. And they all kind of liked that. And then they mm. took off centers and just went with Creed. Smart. Yeah. So the guys began playing in Tallahassee, which, by the way, was really a big place for bands for a while. A lot of it coming from Creed getting their start there. Um, Interesting. I spent my early 20s, like 20 and 21, going to local concerts all the time in Tallahassee. That's so cool. Like, yeah, you could start going to this place, uh, Floyd's Music Store, which is where they kind of started at 18. So that's kind of, there's not a lot to do in Tallahassee, as you can imagine. Yeah. Did you ever see anybody like that became big that you saw first there? No, No, not really. I mean, I saw a 
several of the local bands would get like these very small record deals and um you would think it was really cool and they were going to be the next creed and then nothing really happened with them yeah. but knowing creed had gone through the same thing you thought it could happen yeah well, they sure. had dueling pianos do have you ever done a dueling piano has gone to those that's that, so yes, fun to like me. I a love dueling that. piano bar so much fun yes yeah I absolutely love that. So that was kind of my thing. My sister, I lost my license and my sister found it. And one time she and I went in, so I had to get, to get another license. And we look a little alike, not this much alike, but I used my license to get into this place and she was underage and she used my license to get in and they were like, this isn't you. She just came through and they made it like, so we all had to go home. But that was her great idea to get in. She told me she could get in. And I was like, all right. And then I realized she's using my license. I'm like, you could have gotten me arrested. Oh, my gosh. Somehow I thought this was going to end with you and her dueling at the pianos when she was like, I, oh, I, no. I saw it going but to I a did different share direction, with but. you that she and I did do just the two of us, the rap on a Caribbean cruise, on cruise. a carnival Caribbean Still cruise. Still waiting on the proof. It was not well received. There's no <laughs> video. I think I sent you the picture, though. There's no video. Yes. It doesn't exist. Yeah. So Back to good, the story. Capri pants. Okay. <laughs> so the guys meet this guy named Jeff Hansen. He's, I think he works at Floyd's or he owns Floyd's music store. I, I can't really remember. But he thinks they are incredible, and he wants to sign them to his management company, and so he then invites them to meet this guy named John Kershwitz, who's this local producer. And he's the guy who ends up producing their first three albums. So the band goes on to write their first album called My Own Prison. Fun mm-hmm. fact, My Own Prison, do you know how much it costs to make the first copy, if you had to guess? No, I couldn't guess. But if you to make- had to guess. But, oh. The first album, the whole album, the how much whole it cost? album in Tallahassee. No one knows who they are, so think low. Eighty thousand dollars. Oh, um, so a Tallahassee eighty thousand would be six thousand. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I was like low. S- it seemed low. I don't know. Yeah. There's a lot of costs in the studio and time True. and instruments. True, but they were able to make it for six thousand, which is incredible long. because that it is. goes on to sell six million copies. Oh my gosh! Now that is some good math. It is. So I mean, they did some remastering or whatever, but that original sure. one was six thousand. Amazing. Yeah. So they go on from being local favorites to international superstars, and so when it's all said and done, Creed sells over fifty-three million albums worldwide. Dang. Yeah, so if you're into rock at this point, they just had banger after banger after banger. They're known all around the world, and some of their songs, My Own Prison, My Sacrifice, One, One, and One Last Breath. One Last Breath is probably Mm. my favorite song by them. I love it. And while they're known all over the world, there's really nothing that was going to prepare them for what was happening next. So in 2001, the group wins a Grammy for Best Rock Song for the song With Arms Wide Open. And so do you know the story behind this at all? Okay. Not behind the song? Yeah. No. Well, get ready, Rebecca. You'll like this. So Scott said he finds out that his wife at the time, Hillary Burns, is expecting a baby, that they're going to be having a baby. And so he writes this song to his unborn son, Jagger. Mm. That's oh, Jagger. Mm-hmm. okay. So I went into he the Mick Jagger first. direction. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not PK and Dorit. Oof, not, Scott's back yeah, he, first. Yeah. Beat them to the punch. Uh, my yeah. daughter has a friend named Jagger from middle school. A girl. Oh, yeah? Well, there yeah. you go. It's a great, I mean, it's a good name. It's a cool I, name. This song, the lyrics, I love. Like, they're yeah. very sweet. Knowing and it's for his kid. Yeah, that's very sweet. In the CD, I did not read this, but I feel like I knew this from a long time ago. They had a heartbeat, like the heartbeat of his son, was playing in the song and part of it I think it's in the beginning right like as a mom that like absolutely yeah yeah. Jagger's now in his I think 20s now so Creed at the time is the biggest one of the biggest rock bands if not the biggest rock band in the early 2000s so they release three albums together My Own Prison, Human Clay, and Weathered. During this time kind of at the end of this their bass player named Brian Marshall leaves and they become just a trio 
I wrote threesome, but I definitely meant trio. <laughs> I did that so many times <laughs> with TLC. <laughs> right? I'm like, ooh, what, what did I do here? So this should have sort of been a hint that maybe things aren't going as well in the band as mm-hmm. people think. And so in 2002, the band's traveling to promote this third album, Weathered, and that's when Scott is involved in a car wreck. Oh. The wreck, it was pretty bad, but he says this is where he becomes addicted to pain medications. Oh. And so at this point, he's already struggling with alcohol, but this is where pain medications come in. And so this is kind of the beginning of the end for the band. So I read an article uh, from Billboard magazine from 2019, and Scott opens up about the beginnings of his mental health struggles. He says he begins to realize these feelings of depression, but thanks to this like manly man, dude rock, he felt like he really couldn't reach out to get help for this. This isn't something people were talking about in the early 2000s. And so he said, quote, I didn't know what was wrong with me, and also I didn't want to let anybody down. So I tried to just keep it a secret, which is the biggest mistake anyone suffering from any type of mental health issue could make. It started with depression for me, and then as a way to cope and try to feel better, to try to literally do my job, I was self-medicating, which then led to, you know, the addiction and the other issues, end quote. So in 2001, he begins dealing with prednisone withdrawals. Scott says he's drinking Jack Daniels, has a gun in his hand, and considers taking his own life. But then he sees this photo of his son, Jagger, decides to put the gun down, and leaves the place he was staying. But also in 2003, the band is sued by four fans who attend a show at the Allstate Arena in Illinois. Rebecca, I don't think I've ever heard of this happening. Tell me if this is new for you, okay? Okay. So the lawsuit's against Creed, the management, as well as Ticketmaster. So these four ticket holders say they attended this December 29th, 2002 concert and said Scott was unable to perform. They said he was, quote, so intoxicated and or medicated that he was unable to even sing one Creed song. They also said that he was leaving the stage on several occasions during songs for long periods of time. He was rolling around on the floor in apparent pain or distress. And at some point, he appeared to pass out on the stage. And so, as you can imagine, this isn't a good look for your band. Um, no. Mark Tremonti said his whole family was at that concert. It oh, was goodness, just terrible. And what did they do? They were just standing there playing the songs, hoping he's going to pick Click himself in up at some and be point. able to do yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the concert goers end up asking to be refunded since they were like, hey, technically we did not this attend. This was not a show. <laughs> at all. And so they end up suing for their ticket prices, which were around two fifty dollars a piece, as well as parking fees. And they ask the judge to consider a $2 million class action lawsuit for okay. this concert. Stop. Yeah, I know. I know. No word on how that t- uh, turned out, but I'm sure it was settled out of court because, of course, that's what always happens. Right. But this is kind of the straw that breaks the camel's back, right? You, imagine your fans are suing you. Imagine people hear us on this podcast, Rebecca, and they decide to go to court over, I don't know. I don't even want to say that. I don't want to put that in the universe. Forget yeah, it. Also, Forget it. This, this free podcast, like, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you pay me $250 to listen to it, I'm okay with an occasional lawsuit. That's Absolutely. <laughs> I can only, yeah, I can't even, I don't even want to think about what they would bring yeah. as a delete, complaint. Delete, delete. There's too many. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So in 2004, though, the next year, Things are over. The band released a statement with Mark Tremonti very clearly saying we are breaking up and Scott is the one to blame for this. Oh, geez. Yeah. I mean, he talks about him having addiction issues, not being able to travel, just kind of the whole thing not being great. And Mm -hmm. so eventually Mark and the other members of Creed, so the other, so the three that left, they all broke up. So everybody but Scott started another band called Alter Bridge. And they bring in one other guy. But, like, it's like Creed minus Scott Stepp plus wow. one other dude. Like, that's, that's how much they worked out well together. But he yeah. was the issue here. Yeah. And so Scott begins his solo career. He had this song called Relearn Love, which I actually listened last night. And I really like that song. It was on the Passion of the Christ soundtrack. They had hmm. a bunch of different artists wow. uh, do songs for it. But his career really never gets going, his solo career. He's gone on to release three solo albums called The Great Divide, Proof of Life, and The Space Between the Shadows. 
But while he's really trying to kick off this solo career, his personal life is falling apart. And Rebecca, if you don't know the story, buckle up because we are about to kick it in overdrive after Mm -hmm. we take a quick break to hear a word from this week's sponsors. So back to Scott. The band has just disbanded. Nice there. Um, Mark Tremonti and the other two have formed Alter Bridge. They're actually a pretty big rock band. I haven't really listened to them, but it's kind of like after Nirvana, Dave Grohl starts with Foo Fighters. Has I mean, he has amazing success with them, but same kind of idea. So in 2005, back to Scott, he is arrested after he gets in a fight with the members of the band 311. Do you know 311? That's uh, it's like ringing up. I mean, yes. Amber is a But I don't think energy. I could name. Oh, okay. That um, just very, seems so specific. <laughs> I know. I Listen, this is all my jam. Um, very clearly. Um, so 311 has the hottest <laughs> lead singer in the world, Nick Hexum. I will die on that hill. Um, but they take to their message board after this fight with Scott, who he takes on an entire band. Um, And they say that over the Thanksgiving holidays, Scott comes to this airport lounge in Baltimore and he's completely intoxicated. He's acting belligerent. He's arguing with everyone there. And they say uh, Scott ends up sitting next to S.A. Martinez's wife, who's somebody in the band, and says something inappropriate to her. So Chad Sexton, this other member of the band, asks Scott to leave. Instead of leaving, Scott punches Chad. Oh, Yeah, so this quote is important, and it will come up again later. It said, quote, Scott was looking for a fight, and that's what he got. A fight ensued. Soon the police arrived, and everyone was restrained and questioned, and Scott was ultimately asked to leave the hotel, end quote. So that's kind of all that happens there with 311. I read something else that was like, the police never came. That part didn't happen, but that's Hmm. what the band wrote on there, um, Forum. Remember whenever bands used to like go on their own like website and they would like post updates and stuff? That's what this was. It's like the equivalent of, of clipping an article. It's like- <laughs> it, it is. It is. Now it's just like a tweet. Just send mm-hmm. it out to everyone. Right. So shortly after Scott's marriage to Hillary, um, I think about a year after, he and Hillary divorced and he became the primary guardi- guardian for their son, Jagger. Wow. Yeah. So in uh, after this fight with 311, though, Scott is dating this woman named Jacqueline Neshawat. She is the current Miss New York at that time. Um, they met, meet at a charity event sometime in 2004. They go on to get married in a beautiful black tie wedding in Miami, Florida on February wow. 11th, 2006. The next day, <laughs> the couple is headed to Hawaii from Florida. They have okay. a layover in L.A., And that's when, on their honeymoon, after one day of marriage, Scott is arrested. Oh, shoot. I know. Jackie later says on relationship therapy, they're in the airport, headed to Hawaii. She had one drink with him, but he continued to drink more and more. And eventually, he's not allowed on the plane because he's so intoxicated. But he goes further, and, you know, he's belligerent, and they end up having to call the police. And she says... It's humiliating. We're supposed to be, you know, married, getting ready to set out on this adventure. And he is arrested in the airport and it's national headlines. Like, that's a story people are going to print for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And he said this would happen quite often where he would have this drinking incident, something like this. And then he would kind of white knuckle it for eight or nine months. And then he would go right back back to it. And it was just this cycle that kept continuing to happen. So Jackie speaks more on the show and says she knew that he had a problem with alcohol but thought it would get better. And she said he would become angry and looking for a fight, which is what I was saying before. The members of 311 said he wanted to fight He's someone. Instigating, yeah. And if you look back on his childhood and stuff, like it, it, it all makes sense, right? It kind of all goes hand in hand, which is just so sad. And 2006 was another rough year for Scott. And honestly – Rebecca, 2022 is about to be a real rough one for you after I tell you this next story that I oh, no. blocked out of my head. Oh, God. Okay. Well, just wait. In 2006, Scott claims that a personal tape was taken from a safe in his home, and this group, the Red Light District Company, ends up with their hands on it. In this tape is Scott, four women, 
And Kid Rock. Oh. Ew. Yeah. Can you imagine how quickly you'd want that off the internet and scrub from the world? And my brain? Mm hmm. You can't, you'll never get this moment of no. your life back. No. There's before and- Kid Rock and after <laughs> Kid Rock. That's oh. all there is now. <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Okay. Yeah. So, anyway. Scott sues and is like, this was taken from my home, which sounds very Tommy Lee and Pamela, like the whole thing that happened to them. Yeah. Um, so he sues to have this taped down. Finally, they're sexy. able Sorry. to get it taken down. Yeah. Kid Rock. As soon as I saw that, I was told my husband, I'm like, I did not know this. And he's like, I feel like you would have known it. And I was like, you know what? I think I blocked it out because this feels a little traumatic. Yeah. So anyway, in 2007, they end up settling the suit for an unspecified amount of the profits, of mm-hmm. course. But I don't mm-hmm. think you can find it on the internet. And I have to be honest, did not search. Don't Good for you. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's wise. Yes. So in 2006, continues this terrible, horrible, no good year for Scott. But that's when he meets his guardian angel. So this clip is about a minute, Rebecca. But I think you guys really need to hear this from Scott's okay. mouth. About a, a, a suicide attempt that, yeah. that thank God, botched. <laughs> so tell us the story. Yeah, I, I had uh, gone on a bench uh, and checked myself into the penthouse at the Delano Hotel in South Beach. I never forget it. The rooms were all white. And, and I remember uh, in one of the stages of, of my being awake for three days, I thought I was in, uh, you know, one flew over a cuckoo's nest and, you know, in an asylum. And really, I was in that prison of alcohol and, and drug addiction. And, so I started hearing things like the cops were coming through the door and I started thinking, um, you know, I can't embarrass my family. And, you know, I talk about this in Sinner's Creed, the book. And so I was trying to climb over the balcony uh, and, uh, you know, fell 40 feet and uh, did some damage to my body, uh, fractured my skull and broke my hip and nose and couldn't move. And I laid out there for about two and a half hours and uh, a guardian angel showed up, uh, rapper T.I. And so he, he immediately took care of the situation and, and saved my life. How does T.I. just show up in a random place like that? I tell you what, I, I had met T.I. Um, back in, I believe, 2004. Uh, we were both writing songs for The Passion of the Christ, uh, songs inspired by soundtrack. Um, I just want to retract my previous statement from my last episode that I saw the world's worst host, the guy um, on the Are You the Girl finale. Yeah. This woman has just taken the title. When I saw that, I could not believe her saying that. Like, I feel like it's very well-intentioned, but, oh, did not land. Did not land. The word, the tone, it was all The tone wrong. was way off. The tone was way off. Um, way off. But even though I know we had another clue and that it was T.I., I, I still still was like who's the guardian angel right <laughs> I, I'm delighted to hear it's T.I. and I can't yeah. wait to hear more yeah it's so wonderful so apparently T.I. and Scott had met a few years before uh recording these songs for the Passion of the Christ soundtrack they found out they loved Alabama and so um they Scott said whenever he at, at the end of this uh little interview he says something to the effect of I saw this guy wearing an Alabama hat, so I yelled, Roll Tide. And that's when yeah. T.I. saw him. And then T.I. puts together who he, or he said he recognized he recognized T.I., but T.I. says that he didn't know it was Scott Stapp until like a week later. Somebody was like, by the way, did you know you saved Scott Stapp's life? And he was like, no, I had no idea who that was. Because, I mean, as you can imagine, you fall 40 feet, you have a skull fracture, nose fracture, hip fracture. He doesn't walk for a year. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Yeah. So Scott talks about this on relationship therapy and saying what he was saying in the clip. He's on a bench. He's by himself. He's in South Beach. He thinks someone's coming through the door. So he hangs off the 16th floor balcony, and that's when he falls headfirst um, on, like, one of the rafters on the way down. I mean, just so incredibly lucky to be alive. I hope I'm not taking the same tone as that lady, but – Not at all. Truly, it was, it's miraculous. Yes. But things continue on this path for Scott where he's still a danger for himself and others, really. 
And there's a night that there is a um, the police are brought to the home for a domestic disturbance call. The charges are eventually dropped, and Scott releases a statement apologizing to his wife and family. I didn't find any more information on it, but I, I don't know what happened there exactly, but that's what yeah. I do know. But in late 2014, things really come to a head. So Scott has gone to rehab, I think a couple of times at this point, but things, it, it's just, he's still in this, um, in the bouts of addiction, really. Yeah. And so in 2014, Scott starts posting videos on his f- Facebook page, as well as on Creed's Facebook page. And so I just want you to watch like a, mi- a minute of it. It's like 15 minutes long and I'll kind of summarize it, but I just sent you a clip of like one minute and that's that second video. Okay. Hey, what's up guys? Scott here. Uh, I'm sure you've heard the many rumors uh, and slanderous, libelous accusations uh, over the last uh, few weeks. Uh, you know, first, uh, you know, I was dead. Then, uh, you know, that came out, obviously, that that was a hoax. Then there were uh, rumors that I, you know, I'm on drugs and drinking and relapsed and you know, in rehab and all these other things. Uh, That's also a lie. Uh, It's not true. Um, Sober as can be. During this time, he, he, this is a 15 minute video and he talks about, you know, he's left his house. He has nowhere to live. He's living in a Holiday Inn. He says he has no money. He goes on in the tape to talk about how he is totally sober um, nothing's going on. People are stealing money from him. It's really sad. And like, Very. it almost feels like he's trying to convince himself more than other people that he's yeah. sober and this is all, you know, not going well. He ends up talking, um, later about how he felt like he was following an angel on the front of his car. So this angel would appear on the front of his car and he would drive and go where the angel was telling him to go. He believed he was an MK Ultra. He says he has, yeah, <laughs> wait, it gets, just hold that face right there because you're going to need it again in a minute. He <laughs> has uh, no money. He says he doesn't have a home, which isn't exactly true because Jackie says he does have money. He's not homeless, but he has all this cash on him and he would just, he also had shotguns and he would just drive around oh, giving geez. money away or using money for drugs or or whatever. He ends up giving like three Salvador Dali sketches to some church in Alabama, I think. Just it's very obviously there's an, a big issue here. Yeah. And so he says the saddest part to me was he said that during this time he would be driving and he would have like 10 minutes where he was lucid. So he'd be driving, see all this chaos with him, see the guns, see the cash, and not really know what he was doing. Oh, and then scary. before he could kind of figure it out, he would be right back in and and not have any idea what was going on, but being very dedicated to to doing following this angel. So at some point during the week Scott's gone, Jacqueline calls 911 and she says her husband now thinks he's a part of the CIA and he has made some potential threats about President Obama. Like we are just oh my goodness. beyond. But now that that is all involved, people are really searching for him, which that's the uh-huh. good news. Right. He even calls his kid's school, leaves a voicemail that says they need to be careful because ISIS will be attacking their school the next day. Oh. It's oh, oh, oh. horrifically sad. Yeah, yeah. And so he also thinks his family is involved in ISIS and that millions of dollars are taken from him to support terrorism. And so later he says he was having a complete psychotic break. So during this time, Jacqueline files for divorce. Um, A judge rules that she has sole legal and physical custody of their three kids. Scott doesn't get visitation. And Jackie has access to their home exclusively. And Scott really got nothing, which kind of points to how seriously the judge was taking these threats for her her to get everything, him to get nothing. And it wasn't about the money. It wasn't about any of that. It was just he can't be around these kids. He can't be in this home. That was really all they were doing. Yeah. So the search is on for Scott. They eventually find him in Madison County, Florida, which is kind of north of me and then on the way to Tallahassee. Um, And he's wandering the roads. Someone finds him and he said he's being poisoned. And so they ended up putting a 5150 hold on him. 
Shortly after this, though, Scott begins an intensive program where he receives a diagnosis of bipolar disorder. Yeah. Yeah. And so Jacqueline decides not to pursue a divorce, and she supports uh, Scott during his recovery. Yeah. And so he and Jacqueline talk about how much this diagnosis really helped them. It was – they said they knew it was the drugs and alcohol, but they always knew there was something more. And obviously the drugs and alcohol are not going to help um, that at all. And so when Scott and Jackie go on relationship therapy, they're a few years out from all of this, these traumatic events, and they're working on their relationship. I will say they really do seem to love and care for each other. It does seem like, and the doctor on the show talks about this, that at that point that they had more of a, not mother-son relationship, but it was just like, he's going to do whatever she says. And and I didn't feel like she was controlling, but she was just kind of like, I'm not doing this again. And he was scared to mess up. And that's kind Mm -hmm. of what their relationship was. Their dynamic. Mm. Yeah. But he seems to be doing really well now. And uh, he is still touring. He seems to be committed to his sobriety and mental health. He's like a very hands-on dad, according to him and Jackie. But next up, he is set to appear in the movie Reagan, starring Dennis Quaid as Ronald Reagan and Penelope Ann Miller as Nancy Reagan. Any guesses who he is going to play? He's playing a singer from that kind of time era okay so like an 80s singer like during his presidency that before that before well Mm -hmm. he was a hollywood guy reagan so maybe like late 70s oh gosh who could he be it i don't way outside the box think of my eyes are what color blue Uh not frank sinatra frank sinatra really wild right I don't see it, but Me I'm, either. I'm, I'm, you know, open. I'll be open. Me too. Really I'm, I'm excited he has a project Me too. coming up. Yeah. So I really, that's really it with my story. Wow. Um, but yeah, he's he's gone through a lot. And I will say, okay, if you look at the band as a whole, they go from really nothing to becoming Grammy Award winners He's dealing with depression. Then he gets in this accident. He becomes addicted to pain medication. Then he's got all this popularity, and he's got these mental health issues that are not being addressed at all. Mm -hmm. It's kind of the perfect storm, everything that he had going on for something like this to happen. But I remember when this happened in 2014 and seeing that video of him, and it's like 15 minutes long if you want to watch it. It's it's pretty revealing, but – um, and thinking he's going to die. There's no way he's – if yeah. he doesn't get help, he, that's it. You can't come back from this. No. This is really scary. Okay. I didn't know any of this because when, <laughs> when I said nothing I can share, it's because I don't have an opinion or interest in Creed. Like okay. it's just not my thing. Like I didn't know any of this because I wasn't paying attention like probably. Sure. It just wasn't like – hitting my brainwaves in the same way because it's like their music wasn't for me like it's not who I was listening to or whatever um so I absolutely think he is a case of reform is possible like I I think there are people we've done stories about just inherent wired to be a douchebag people who shouldn't be Mm -hmm. correct and then there are stories of people with trauma and addiction and mental health issues that go unchecked who it's really circumstantial and it doesn't excuse behavior abusive sure. or otherwise, mm-hmm. but it it's absolutely like correctable and mm-hmm. treatable. And I believe in second chances for those people who make the work to, you know, to put in the work to have a second chance with the people they've affected. And it seems like he's doing that. So I'm, I'm all for it. I will see Reagan and like, hope it's amazing. Yeah. I I'm still like hung up on the Frank Sinatra thing. Cause I love Frank Sinatra. It's wild. And, like, I can think of like other people first, but mm-hmm. um, interesting. Glad he's working. Super sad story. My gosh. It is. I will say watching him with his dad. So his dad comes on relationship therapy and his dad who leaves the family when he's five is like, listen, if I wouldn't have left, I would have killed that guy and I would be in prison. Is that what you would have wanted? He was like so hardcore. And Scott's like, no, but if it was my kids and that was happening, I would be in prison. Like I wouldn't have yeah, left them. I would have. He's like, yeah. I told you that I was going to, the things that were happening to me would have put put that person in prison and the dad's like well I didn't really know and 
Dr. Jen's like, he can't really make it more clear to you. Like, I just, my heart broke for him in that to see him talking to his dad, who he loves, who he wants to love. Yeah. And his dad being like, well, he knows I love him. And you're like, dude, you're not getting this at all. Yeah. And so, I don't know. I think he's coming from a place of forgiveness now. And I don't know. It's just kind of like as we go through life and you learn all these lessons, you do wish you could have had them when you were younger. And I'm sure that's what he wishes. That like, I wish I could have learned these really hard things earlier on. But that's how life happens. Unfortunately, I know we all have to learn in our own way. And like some of us just have like harder falls, you know, yeah. and, and than others. And he had a lot of really like hard falls. Yeah. Um, well, we'll have to Oof. post the last video I sent you, Rebecca. It's just a little TikTok if you want to look at it. And we'll yeah. post this on Instagram because this is kind of where like I remembered who he was. My husband's going to be so glad I'm done with this because I've been listening to Creed all week. A home to hear the sunlight. Oh, welcome to this place. I'll show you everything. That's great. And so he looks good. great. And yeah. yeah, that's so fun. Yeah. Woo, what a ride. These, um, you know, the music industry has a lot of good stories in it. Right. Don't you think complicated, like, lives are interesting, you know, and, oh, and have a lot sure. to tap into for their music. Absolutely. Um, well, so a lot was, of his, like, um, so the music Mark Tremonti would write, I didn't really go into this, but he would write the lyrics, and the lyrics were always very, um, they could almost be faith-based, What is what people sure. would think. They took a lot of that, and that was a lot from how he grew up. And yeah. so that was kind of how he wrote music. I mean, all of the songs kind of you can – go two ways with with their sure. songs but yeah I, I hear that a lot in his stuff but um relearn love it's not there's a bridge that really annoys me but the rest of it is like just a beautiful song I really really love oh, it so I want to okay. listen to his solo music I want to support people that are doing yes. better for themselves for their kids for their families so a hundred percent good one yeah, it was it was something I got to get out of the dark stuff I've had two dark ones in a row I got to come up with something good. But Those were heavy. They were. But before we do that, Rebecca, do you want to talk about what you're watching? Oh, my gosh, I do. And let me just say, I am so glad I have something to tell you because it's been all married to medicine all the time since for weeks, for episodes. And I just am it's like, seasons. please stop watching this. So you have something to share with Melissa. And I can't. But I did. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay, so I've got a show for you that I'm sure you're going to know, but um, and I just started it a couple of nights ago, so I'm not super far in, but I, I'm enjoying it very much. Okay. So your clues are, and I'm not going to tell you the network, because you are too good. I get network stuff. Fine, fine. <laughs> just I'll give you your network. Uh, now I feel bad. Okay, no, it's no, no, Hulu. go ahead. We'll no, see. No, 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 it's Hulu. Yeah. It's fine. I can't be unfair like that. Beef. You know it. Bear. You already know it. Mm -hmm. You were. Why did I start with beef? I don't know. I truly didn't know what else it would be besides beef. But like that just means you knew it. Like if you didn't know about the bear, you wouldn't. I haven't watched beef. it though. Tell me about it. And you still knew. I I am telling you, I'm always on the fringe of things. That's kind of my thing. I That's don't know your all of it. Toxic I know trait slash a gift. little about a lot. Yeah. <laughs> toxic. Hurtful. Um, that's no, what, no, that's gift. Hurt. Toxic trait slash gift. Yeah, that's it. It is because mm -hmm. it could be both. It kind of just depends on the scenario. No, so I've seen the bear like on my Hulu screen because right. I'm on it all the time rewatching Married to Medicine and still didn't know it was about a guy taking over his brother's, to see his brother's restaurant. So you know more. Okay. Well, anyway. Uh, it's great. I really like it. <laughs> well, no, tell me. I don't know anything other than that. That's all I know. I really know okay, the synopsis. So it stars Jeremy Allen White, and you might not think he's hot in other things he's been in, but there is something about the chefiness of it all that it's working for him and me, I guess. Him or you? <laughs> <laughs> guess me. He plays this guy named Carmen. They call him Carmi. It's like a very Chicago... Italian neighborhood and family. Uh, the main character, Carmi's brother, dies by suicide. And uh, Carmi is a like a Michelin star chef right. in 
a fancy restaurant. He leaves that to take over this, this family business that's in debt, is a mess, has this like hodgepodge characters of, of a staff. Right. And he comes in to try to like keep it going and improve it. And um, so it is a workplace type of show, but not in the office the spirit. Office. Like, <laughs> not not like the office. It's um it's shot so cinematically. It feels like little movies. Honestly, it's beautiful, like food shots and it's the music is great. It's done really, really well. I'm only a few episodes in. There's other actors in it that you would know from other things but are not household right. names. Actually, you might know their names. Um so I'm just enjoying these little like peaks of other people like Oliver yeah. Platt is in it and I didn't even realize it was him he just it's it's fascinating so it's a young chef from the fine dining world comes home to Chicago to run his family sandwich shop after a heartbreaking death in his family a world away from what he's used to Carmi must balance the soul crushing realities of small business ownership his strong-willed recalcitrant kitchen staff and his strained family relationships all while grappling with the impact of his brother's suicide so the rest is kind of the things that I said. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm enjoying it very much. And I just saw that Jeremy Allen White went to Frank Sinatra High School, which is right in my neighborhood. And um, Gabe, my youngest, actually almost went to that. High Have you ever had that moment when you're leaving the house and you wonder, did I lock the door? Or worse yet, you start spiraling and you imagine all the what ifs. I used to feel that way all the time, but it wasn't until a few years ago when I heard about a break-in just a few blocks away that I realized I needed to really step up my home security game. And now I can spiral about the what-ifs on things that don't matter, like reality stars, instead of the what-ifs of home security. We've had Simply Safe protecting our house for the last few years now, and it's a total game changer. With Simply Safe's fast protect monitoring, I know within five seconds if something's actually up and the live guards can actually speak to intruders to stop them. That's faster than a reality TV star can throw a drink. One of the things I really love the most is you're not locked into some over the top 90 day fiance level contract drama. Simply Safe is actually affordable as well, less than a dollar a day with no hidden fees, so it's easy to love. It's no wonder they've been named Best Home Security Systems by U.S. News and World Report for five years running. Whether you want to install it yourself, it really takes less than an hour, or have a professional handle it, Simply Safe is as easy as flipping channels between Chimp Crazy and the Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. So why wait for the drama to happen? Get Simply Safe and know your home is covered just like I did. Protect your home with 50% off a new Simply Safe system. Plus, a free indoor security camera when you sign up for Fast Protect monitoring. Just visit simplysafe.com slash criminality. That's simplysafe.com slash criminality. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Achieving a gorgeous grin from home isn't a total mystery with Bite Clear Aligners. Just don't be surprised if all of your sleuthing friends start asking, What's your secret? Begin by ordering your at home impression kit today for only $14.95. Bite Clear Aligners are doctor directed and delivered to your door. Treatment costs thousands less than braces. Plus, they offer flexible financing, accept eligible insurance, and you can pay with your HSA FSA. Get 80% off your impression kit when you use code WONDERY at Byte.com. That's B Y T E.com. Start your confidence journey today with Byte. High school, but it's performing arts high school. Um, so that's just also a fun Frank Sinatra tie-in that oh, I just that's learned cool. oh. on the fly. So he's a Queens guy, so now I'm super into him. That is the only thing I've watched other than Married to Medicine. Hit me with another show, please. Okay. I feel like I actually told you about this one, so I have high hopes for you. I'm going to give you the uh, channel or whatever. Channel? Streaming service. HBO. Max. Mexico. Drugs. Drugs. You told me okay. about this? No government. It sounds like a show I will watch. What is it? The Anarchist. Oh, you did mention that. No government. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Sorry. So here's their little blurb. A community of anarchists immigrate to Acapulco, Mexico to evade the powers of nations and banks. But as the movement grows, the collective pursuit for a stateless life is derailed by wealth, conflict, drugs, and murder. Love. Yes. So I think it's, I think it's seven parts. I think there's been five parts um so it, it follows several people who leave the u.s in search of having anarchy basically wow but it means different things to different people so for some of them they're rich they come from the u.s they're like let's just yolo whatever let's do this and it's very easy for them because they aren't paying taxes they're just kind of doing their own thing they're making this conference called anarchapulco which 
Rebecca, they will make a conference. They love a conference more than life itself. They all <laughs> will create their own conference. There's like Anarfolco. There's a Anar. I don't know. There's just so many of them. Like every time one starts, there's one money or- in conferences. Tons of money, which is kind mm-hmm. of hilarious to you know talking with what they're doing. But the crazy thing is, so there's these two, Lily and John, and they come from the U.S. and they're escaping like. Um, some drug laws. They got in trouble, I think, for selling marijuana, something like that. They have to sneak across the border, and they're like, we're anarchists. We're we're real for real. So anyway, they're here to, like, thinking they're joining these other anarchists. And they go to Anarchapulco, the conference, and realize, like, people are selling Bitcoin. Like, Bitcoin becomes a huge thing down there. And then sure. there's just all this, like, corruption going on. One guy Shocker. gets killed. Yeah. There's one guy, I can't figure out what's happened to him, but I really don't like him, but they haven't showed him being interviewed, so he's either dead or in jail, is my guess. Whoa. Um, But it's interesting, because all the characters, like, I don't want to be friends with any of these people. One lady, she moved to Belize, I liked her. No one else do I find very likable in this, but it's fascinating um, just hearing how they're living, how they got there, the decisions they made to get themselves um, to Anarchapulco, how much, <laughs> how much anarchists actually kind of want rules in this scenario and aren't oh. really thrilled about things going on. But it's really fascinating. Several episodes are out, so it's a great time to check it out. There's new episodes Sunday nights. Oh my gosh, that is so intriguing, and it it would yeah a fascinating human experiment because it would take everybody probably thinks on some level there's there's something appealing about anarchy. right yeah um but how few of us go to the other you know flip over to the other side to right. pursue it and then what you're saying is like maybe there is something human in us that does crave structure so to watch yeah. that tension that sounds really yeah so like scary and one of the conference yeah one of the conferences has like very detailed schedule this lady's running it blah blah, blah. and the other one's like just stand up and talk if you want to talk so there's oh, just like yeah. these competing things but when bitcoin gets involved it's just wild to me because they're like these poor two travelers have come over and they're like bitcoin what are we doing here so it's um it, it's it's very fascinating and i had i had no idea about any of this it's so i always like stuff to be surprised by so that was it. Oh yeah, I I love I love to learn. Um, yep. And also, I'm thinking like no rules around Bitcoin. Like that just already like spells a lot of shade. Like people Ugh. get real scammy and shady. And I don't know. I'm interested. Yeah, it's it's scammy and shady for sure. Cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. You'll enjoy it. I will. Rebecca, mm-hmm. I'd like to toss this here baton to you, and okay. uh, metaphorically, and uh, I would love love to hear what you're going to do for your next episode. <sighs> okay. As of uh, 58 minutes ago, (laughs) here are my clues. (laughs) Soccer, Apprentice, UK. No, I have no idea. Nothing, no initial thoughts. Well, initial thoughts, I only know like Christian Ronaldo. I know Shakira is involved in stuff now and she was married to a soccer player. Hmm. And that's all I've got. Yeah, that's all I've got. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, then um, stay in the mystery and I'll tell you in two weeks from now. Thank you, everybody, for listening to today's wonderful episode. You can catch Melissa on Tuesdays with her other show, Moms and Murder. And while we're forcing to Rebecca to can continue working here on criminality, she is taking a summer hiatus from dialogue. Um, so you'll just have to find her here from now on, or you can listen to her backlog. She's got lots of really good interviews and different cool people on there. True, true, true. And you can follow us on Instagram at Criminality Show, on TikTok at Criminality Podcast TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you again for listening. We'll see you in two weeks. Bye. Thank you for listening to Criminality. If you're enjoying the show, please head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen and give the show a rating and review. The reality is it would be a crime to keep your thoughts to yourself. And come join the fun outside of the podcast and follow us on social media. We are at Criminality Show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Memes are welcome. We'll see you in two weeks with a new episode. Until then, you can catch my co-host Melissa on her weekly show, Moms and Murder and Rebecca Sebastian on her podcast, Dialogue, a true crime conversation. Don't forget, loving reality isn't a crime.